Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Songs of the Same Name on the Scratch Track Podcast, presented by the Dude and Grim Show. I am the Dude. And I am Grim. And today we're going to talk about the songs just on Songs of the Same Name, parentheses with a slightly different spelling. In this case, isolated yeah. incidents, uh, isolated incident, uh, purely because which I love, Run the Jewels, who is the second artist uh, featured here, first one being Radiohead, spells it with a money sign. Mm Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, Grim, we want to remind all of you watching and listening for the first time, or even if you're coming back for another time and you have not liked and subscribed yet, you should go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment below. Yeah. And the crowd goes wild. And the crowd goes wild. All right, Rin Tin Tim, let's get into it. We're doing just by Radiohead first. Yep, as um, it came out on their 1995 their album. album. Oh, their sophomore album. Yeah, called The Benz. Baby's got it. Yep. Uh, it was actually, dude, the fourth single. I looked this album uh, when I looked this really? album up. This album had this album had six singles. Yeah, it was pretty pretty crazy. Um, Not really the um... my iron lung, flake flake. flake. Fake Plastic Trees, High and Dry were all, I think, ahead of it. Um, although there was one where they said, I think it was like Fake Plastic Trees and Planet Telex with like a slash. I don't know what that means. but Maybe anyways. they did like a um, like in the old days, a two-sided single. Yeah, yeah. But this is a, um, it's a, it's a good song. I do, I do like it. I like it on the album. Um, you can see with... With Radiohead obviously going Pablo Honey, The Benz, OK Computer, definitely trending in a certain direction. Yeah. Although this uh, this song I feel like does almost kind of bridge the two albums a little bit. There's some uh, there's just some I, I really like the upbeatness to it. Uh, it's it's just got yeah. a good, it's got a good move, good tempo. One thing that I would note, um, which is is going to get into a couple things here, is that so it was written Segway. by Johnny Greenwood, right? The guitarist and and there was a statement that Tom York said where it was like he was trying to get as many chords in as he could <laughs> and if you listen to it there is a lot of chords and a lot of changes and Forrest friend of the show sent us or yeah, sent the show. I think he sent both of us uh, this, this yeah, video where there's there's a, a musician who knows a lot about music theory and they break it down and analyze it and I wouldn't have thought about it like this um, because I, I guess I don't necessarily look at music completely from a theoretical perspective in that way. Because rock and Neither. like composed music are kind of different animals to me. But he broke it down, and uh, the guy's name is David Bennett Piano is his, his YouTube handle. Um, but I okay. would check out the the video. It's really interesting. He talks about doing a lot of things with chromaticism and modal interchanges. And that he did kind of compare the opening riff as being similar to Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit in its cadence. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I could see that. I could definitely see that. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Um, well, dude, I, I found this little nugget fact a little interesting. Okay. In, 2000, in 2007, NME placed it 34 out of 50 in its list of 50 greatest indie anthems ever. I don't know. I, I like the song. I don't know if I would quite put it that high. There's 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 other songs on this album I would put higher probably. I think than, NME than may that. want to take a cue from Rolling Stone and probably like revise this list every couple of years you know, as like, yeah. you know, like new shit has come to light. Yeah, that was 2000, you know? yeah, 2007. Yeah. 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 It's a lot's Usually happened nice since then. Definitely. Well, um, I think, you know, my, it's, I guess, sort of a repeating line a little bit in the song, but dude, just the lines, you know, you do it to yourself. You do, um, that's what really hurts. You do it to yourself, you and no one else. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot, you know, I know some people out there like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think we all do. Yeah. And yeah. in some ways, know, we all do it to our own selves as well. We do. Whatever wow. it may Just, be for you. Whatever it is. Absolutely. Talk to well, someone. Well, dude, I know you want... There's a lot of good I know counselors you wanted to do, uh, 
there are. I know you wanted to talk about the video. I think this dude in the video probably needed a counselor. Dude, he did. And, and actually, it turns out all the people did around him, too, because at the end, um, they, they were all lying there. Um, I found the video very... Interesting. Like, I, I don't remember really watching or seeing this back in the time, because I think at that time, MTV probably still did play music or at least some music. Well, yeah, because yeah. you had Paranoid Android had a popular video, Karma Police, Karma Police, after this. So I just don't remember seeing this video much, but gosh, it was so interesting watching it now. Phil Again, Selway has yeah. hair. Tom York has like this kind of reddish weird hair and they're really they're wearing like bad clothes. Yeah. Ed O'Brien has like real weird like sunglasses on and they're playing in an apartment. And yeah, this dude's just laying in the street and he's like, sorry, man, I, I just can't tell you why I'm laying here in the street just waiting to get run over by a bus. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but then and people are all walking by and looking at him like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then. And then he says, I think he whispers or says something Yeah, because they have subtitles throughout the whole thing, yeah. but then that part does not have a subtitle. And then it just cuts and, like, everybody else is laying on the ground. So yeah. whatever he told them must have been some pretty deep shit, right? Yeah, I'm thinking it could have been a lot of things. The origin of the universe could have been one thing. Who killed Kennedy? There's, there's like, a lot of deep thing or, you know, really, really things that could just basically— I'm surprised they all didn't do a scanner's. Dude, you know, I bet, I bet, I bet he told him what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction. Oh, that's another really good one. Yeah, yeah, I bet that's what he told him. He's oh, like, we happy. Figured out. No, he's like we, Marcellus we Wallace was right. <laughs> 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 yeah. So if you haven't watched um, your episode on songs that made the movie for Pulp Fiction, check that out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, we, we also got another. Go. Another episode you should check out because we're going to get into the Run the Jewels version of Just, which we did a full scratch of that album, which is number four. Oh, so go great ahead, album. Check that out. Dude, it's a bad One of my album. favorite songs off the album, Just. Dude, featuring Pharrell Williams and Zach Taylor Roach. Taylor Roach. Uh, now, yeah. I, I've, I learned a lot about this. A couple things listeners out there should do. There's a great podcast out there called Song Exploder. And Song Exploder talks to artists and they basically dissect just one one song. And they, they go through right. all of it, like the recording process. Is that the Netflix thing? Yeah, it's on Netflix now, too. And I don't think okay. the Run the Jewels is one of the ones that's on Netflix, but it started as a podcast. Yeah, so there's, well, I know, but there's a lot more just in the podcast, right? Right. And okay. so Just was one of those songs, but I had already heard about a lot of this in their second installment on Rick Rubin's Broken Record podcast because they were at his studio and worked with him on some of the album, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They were. I yeah. Think. So a, a couple things. Uh, uh, some of the background stuff that sounds like it was the singing. They actually know somebody, I think they said, who was from Brooklyn, who's like kind of a, a choral singer. And so okay. or like maybe gospel or soul stylish. And they like they sampled this person singing a but or they recorded them singing something i don't know what they were singing and then cut that up for a lot of the samples that you hear in the song and then apparently cool. they had like a lot of their verses and then when pharrell came in uh, he brought to the table as far as i understand correct me if i'm wrong super fans but he brought in the whole part that he sings which is like mastered economics which is is okay. like so key to the whole song yeah yeah, I mean, and that's, I, I love the sort of the, especially with just with this whole album, the political aspect mm. of it and how aggressive it is. And it came out, it just came out last year in the summer. Like it is just so poignant for like this, yes. this time. And especially this summer, what this whole country was going through. Um, and, you know, the, 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 one of the main lines is, you know, look at all these slave masters posing on your dollar. Like, yeah. dude, that's just, dude, such a good line. I, I think the only line. line more pointing in the album is the one where he talks about I can't breathe. I, because that, that was that line, that statement, because of what happened, um, unfortunately Floyd, yeah, for George Floyd, was became such a thing. 
Um, that yeah. was far and away like the most poignant, intense thing they said. But this would have to be number two. I, I mean, it, well, and the thing is with that, I can't breathe. Like it, the way I read it, and I believe they they even talked about it. Like that was done and recorded before. Oh, before, George Floyd. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like they like, oh, this happened. We're gonna put it in. Like that yeah, happened yeah. Before that's, I mean, a, a very. Uh, I don't creepy kind of coincidence and, and everything. But, you know, in the episode that that we did uh, previously, I kind of threw out some numbers and stats because when you know you make a statement like, you know, look at all these slave masters posing on your dollar. I was like, you know, let's look up some of the people who are on the dollar bills. And did they own slaves? And uh, by golly, they did. OK, mm-hmm. so um, George Washington, he, gosh, what he said of the. 317 enslaved people on Mount Vernon in 1799, just a little less than half, 123, were owned by George Washington himself. Wow. Um, Thomas Jefferson, in his lifetime, is said to have owned more than 600. I believe Um, Jefferson's a popular name, interestingly enough. That's true, yeah. And Benjamin Franklin, um, he owned two slaves during his life, both of whom worked as household servants but it's also said that um as he got older he came to view uh slavery as a vile institution and ben you're right it is it was yeah so yeah. um so anyways i i just thought that was uh it was interesting it's just something i wanted you know if you're gonna make a statement like that it's like oh well i, I just it kind of got curious and yeah uh, sure wanted to, wanted to look that up and so um you know i i don't have the source for that in front of me but you know that's what the internet said yeah, so it's got to be true. Uh, it's gotta be true. <laughs> um, the only other thing that I think is is really interesting that that always stood out to me about hearing about how the song was recorded was that I, I guess they're they're tight enough with Zach De La Rocha where they kind of consider him like a de facto third member of the group because I think he's yeah. been on all their albums <laughs> in, right, in at right. least one spot, and so LP described it as he sent the verse or the 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 track over and you know told him where he wanted him to put his verse and that Zach De La Rocha just recorded it in like some small thing he had in his home with like just a cheat like a vocal mic you'd use at a live venue not like a professional condenser mic but he was like it kind of like peaked a little bit and it captured this rawness that like you know i couldn't i couldn't it was it was so perfect and so he was talking to him and and zach had mentioned to him that he wanted you know was looking forward to coming out and re-recording the verse and he was like no, I, th- I no. think we're going to keep this one. <laughs> we got it. We yeah. got it. Oh, that is uh, that is really cool because you're right. It does have a, a a real raw kind of, I don't know, dirtiness to it. Oh, yeah. Um, gr- grittiness. Sorry. Grittiness is a better word. Uh, and, and it's it's really cool because that, you know, when he sings in the way he sings, it just fits his voice so well. Oh, yeah. To, yeah, to, I to, agree. To have, to have that sound. So, um, all right, Grim, which one, if you had to pick... Dude, I'm running them. I'm yeah. running them, yeah. dude. Yeah, I, it's yeah. it's so much better, and it's yeah. spelled with I, a fucking money sign. Money sign. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. I got to go with Run the Jewels as well. I mean, dude, Radiohead's my favorite band, and um, but this is not not only you know I, I like the Benz. I think it's a good album, um, and I think this is a good song off the album. It's it's probably in my you know the top. It's in the top half of the album for me, but. This is one of the songs that really, when I think of Run the Jewels, this is one of the songs that really stands out to me when I think about, you know, this album, their catalog and everything. And it just couldn't be more poignant today. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, well, Graham, I think that wraps up Just. You feeling just? Yeah. Justified. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, everyone. Well, let us know below which one you prefer. Is there one better, one worse? What do you think? Let us know. What did the guy say in the fucking video? Please tell us that. Yeah. What do you, yeah. What do you think he said? I would really like to know that. I mean, besides Marcellus Wallace was right. I mean, other than that, Uh, but uh, a year from now, (laughs) dude, I'm just going to start wearing a bandaid on the back of my neck. (laughs) Yep. Well, with that said, (laughs) all right, it's time to go guys. Dude and Grim show. Scratch a track is produced by the dude Grim, a 
Additional music provided by Moore and the Tims. Copyright 2021, The Doom Grim Show. Say just a series of commands So you dig yourself a hole